and I greeted you every morning like, what up, my ninja? And just, and like no one ever saw my full face, right? And and it, that was just it. That was the mystery and shit, because all you saw was this. It's like that neighbor from Toolman Taylor and shit. <laughs> Connected to Sales Remastered. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Sales Remastered. My name is Daniel. I'm your host, and in this episode of Breakfast of Champions, I want to I want to walk down memory lane with you again. Yes, again, because I'm getting a lot of uh, a request to talk more about my background, talk more about my challenges that I experienced, and you know, put it in perspective for everyone, because I guess the answers just wasn't fucking good enough. Anyway, <laughs> let me go ahead and share, let me go and share with you some fucking, you know, step-by-step -step experiences and shit. No, but for real though, I, 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 you know, I'm growing along with this brand, and when I say I'm growing, what I'm talking about is I'm growing, I'm learning how to talk to the public, right, and to talk uh, uh, public speaking is the fucking craft that I'm working on right now and I personally have overcome a few challenges since I started this brand from being comfortable in front of camera from you know to being to being courageous enough to not necessarily worry about others and be so focused on other people's perception or other people's you know thoughts and I grew up in a background where culturally and also because of the circumstances you always had to be aware of your surroundings and and more so you always like you know coming up in the street like we you know we have this uh this facade right like oh we're tough we don't give a fuck right 5150 it's all about that crazy life when in all reality i mean each and every person that thinks they're tough they're just they're worried about the perception of others and this is why people tattoo their face because they want to look cool well why do they want to look cool why do they want to look tough is because they're they're on defense a lot and one thing that i learned about you know this environment or this scenery is anytime i ever went to the ghetto versus anytime i ever went to a good neighborhood is that everyone in the motherfucking ghetto had a negative mindset a negative kind of like the shackle on them like man we about that life over here dog we cool as shit you know i'm about to go get my 40. nobody want no motherfucking 40 ounce bro like i remember i used to be about that mind state where i used to you know what i mean like like just be ghetto just to be ghetto because it was the fucking flavor of the month and shit like like you were not cool unless you're wearing swap meat clothing like i went from you know plain t-shirts right the deals like the t-shirt warehouse you ever see those on the street it says like get eight shirts for like three dollars and shit and all of them were them triple a shirts man you remember them triple a shirts motherfuckers were rough as fuck it was <laughs> Man, I found a triple A shirt in my garage and it was like um, with this box of real old belongings, like real old. And you know, I pledged for a fraternity back in the day in my hopes of trying to get with the better crowd. I ended up fucking up even worse. <laughs> I, ended up, I ended up doing more crazier shit. Anyway, I found in this triple uh, A uh, warehouse shirt. Man, that it was like, like sandpaper, bro. Like you just, you know what I mean? Like when you're young, you don't really care about the quality. Anyway, I want to share with you why I'm going down this route of, you know, of, of growing and learning is because through my experience and through watching kind of the chronological timeline of, of video one up until now, you'd be able to witness firsthand experience of, of t going from zero to however many followers or, or, or subscribers this channel has by the time you watch this. But here's the interesting thing is, is that one year later when you watch this, even if you watch this video and it's six or seven years old, the interesting thing is you can go to today's video and you damn sure bet there's gonna be one available. And you can damn sure bet that I'm just gonna be that much more better. And you can damn sure bet that my message is still preaching the motherfucking same. And it's that it is a choice for you to grow. It is a choice for you to stay in your environment. It is a choice for you to give in to the ghetto-ness because that's the cool thing. And typically when you take a step back and you realize like, why the fuck did I think AAA shirts were cool? Or why the hell did I think that being ghetto was cool? And what you're gonna find 
is that you thought it was cool because your circle thought it was cool. Your clique thought it was cool. Your fucking group thought it was cool. That's why. And then when you realize that you sacrifice a lot of shit, like you, <laughs> you sacrifice integrity, quality of life, safety, because of, of what you believed was cool. And I was all about that. I, I lived about that life too. And so let me give you an example. When I, uh, you know, when I was young, man, when I was like, uh, I want to say 14 years old, right? I lived in downtown Long Beach, uh, the downtown, like the slums of Long Beach. And it was my 14th birthday, like literally the day of my 14th birthday. And, and I was kind of mad, you know, because no one, no one wished me happy birthday, right? Like it's kind of just something you want to hear and shit like, happy birthday. <laughs> Nah, I didn't get that shit. How my morning started off was my uncle, rest in peace. And I know he, you know, he's a good man. He, I, I'm not disrespecting him in any way. But, uh, you know, he's just real old school, right? And so I remember waking up that morning and him sharing with me that, uh, you know, he, I was not his responsibility. I'm doing, he was doing a favor for my brother. And, you know, I, I was just, I was probably being a knucklehead at the time, but all I wanted and all I saw because I was so centered as a 14 year old, right? You know, you don't give a fuck about what you're doing. You just give a fuck about what's happening to you. And what was happening to me at that time was I felt like everyone forgot it was my fucking birthday. I felt like I was just kind of, you know, getting the brunt into the stick. And so I got so mad and my, my, that's how my morning started. I was so pissed. I remember walking, storming out and yelling at my uncle like, man, fuck this. I don't even fucking want to live here. You know, like, uh, I just want to leave or, or something like that. And I remember stomping and walking out. And around the age of 14, I had a cousin whose boyfriend was older, right? Like 30 years old. And he used to uh, have a lot of money. Like this dude just, I mean, he played like the stock markets. And so he was just balling out of control. And I remember he sent me to go pick up some crack for him at some fucking crack alley. And his, uh, the upside to me was that he was going to give me 40 bucks. Like, hey, go go take this taxi cab, go to this alley, see this one dude named Sancho and say Pele Pele or some shit with the 20 through the, uh, through the fence. And, you know, that was cold word. Let me get a double some crack. And so anyways, I did it. I went to my homie and he was like, I remember he told me, he's like, hey, man, once you get it, you got to put it in your mouth, you know, and um, if the cops come or if anybody spits, just swallow it. And, and man, like, so now as an adult, you know what I mean? Like, I couldn't even imagine telling some 14-year-old kid, like, hey, go pick up some crack for me. And if, if you see any cops around, just swallow that piece of crack. Well, what I did was when I got it, it, was, it wasn't even covered up. It was just, a, it was hard crack cocaine. And so when I got it, you know, I, I followed instruction because I wanted my 40 bucks and, you know, I didn't know any better. So when I put the crack in my mouth and I let it sit on my tongue, you know, we were probably a good five minute ride from the taxi cab to my old apartment where I lived in downtown Long Beach. And I remember, man, by the time I exited the car, I was so fucking cracked out. And I, all I remember thinking was looking around because you get paranoid when you're on that shit, right? Like I was going like this and shit. And I'm like, if I see a cop, you know, I'm just going to swallow it. Thank God I didn't swallow it because I can only imagine how fucked up I would have been. And, and the thing is, though, is that this dude... Uh, who, you know, was my cousin's boyfriend at the time, he, he got me into some crazy shit. Like, you know, like he would, he would purposely uh, give me and my friends cash so that we could use our own connections to give him meth. And so this put me into a, a, a different world, you know, because the people that we used to get meth from were the people that gang bang with my brothers and we obviously knew each other and we all became acquainted. And so this started this, this uh, it, it ranged from like a three-year addiction to methamphetamines from the age of 14 to 17. Like I was, I was hooked, bro. And uh, and then I stopped, you know, and, and I and I moved out of that environment again. Key lesson is your environment is key, because I went to live with another family member who lived in Orange County. Orange County and LA County, they're night and day, right? And so the people in Orange County are nicer, and people in LA County are not. <laughs> And typically, right? And this is, I mean, they're good parts of LA County, but the part where I was staying, that wasn't a good part. Anyway, so I moved to Orange County and I get away from the senior year, I was able to drop that addiction. And, you know, I got into grass course and, and I was getting, I was in my senior year. And um, and I ended up enlisting to college because I was, I, I was always able to write. And I, m my girlfriend at the time was like, hey man, you should write a letter for this grant. You know, and I went to Cypress Community College, wrote a letter to get grant money. Man, when I got grant money, bro, like you had no idea. Like it took, 
it took me literally about 20 minutes to write out this fancy letter and then and I would say like a month later I got a check in the mail for like $2,500 Man, pff, man, you give me a check for twenty five hundred dollars, and it says, "Yeah, this is money for books and and studies or whatever." Man, I think out of that twenty five hundred dollars, I put away twenty bucks for for educational accessories and shit. And I went straight to Cerritos Mall. I went to Structure, but man, I was geared the fuck up. I was I was smooth. And uh, you know, during this time, at, at enlisting into college, I rushed an underground fraternity at a Cal State Fullerton called Theta Delta Beta. And they didn't necessarily require that you go to the university, right? It was cool like that and shit. And, you know, uh, I, yeah, like I said, I ended up doing some wild shit. Like, it was good. It was a good experience. I had good quality people around me, but I was still so burnt in my fucking head. I ended up burning a bridge with everyone, you know, in that circle that, that looking back for a period of time, I really regretted because those were actually the only positive influence and actual love that I had within my circle outside of my family. But, but because of my, my, my ignorant ways, I actually gravitated back towards my negative friends and my negative friends and, 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 uh, and that environment influenced me to burn the good environment because something about negativity, man, negativity attracts, you know, they, they have a saying, it's called misery loves company. And it's very true. And so what I, was, what I want to share with you is that when you go into a negative environment, when you go to that ghetto, you're going to notice that, they, that the tonality is different versus if you go somewhere like a positive environment, like a non-ghetto area. And I can say this, right? Like you can call me judgmental, whatever fuck you want to call me. At the end of the day, I went through it. So I'm not fucking judgmental. I went through this shit. I'm telling you the real truth is that when you sit, stop and listen to your circle, whether it's good or bad, and, and if any of the content within your circle right now is, is made up of negative words, is made up of blaming and doubting and, and humiliation, right? That it, it's not a good circle. Like it might feel cool because that your age, right? It might feel cool because it's funny sometimes, but at the end of the day, this shit mounts up and it actually rewires the way you see things. And so when it comes your time to spread your wings and fly, you're already wired in a way to see a negative reaction. You're already wired in a way to expect the worst. You're already wired in a way to be negative. And so then your demeanor, your influence, your momentum, and your energy when you're, when you're spreading your wings to go get your one thing is not as good as if you were surrounded by, like, you know, love, right? Like support, like, uh, like people that, that held you accountable. Like it sucks to be held accountable, right? Cause then you got to answer them like, fuck, I didn't do that. <laughs> I chose to just sit on my ass for three hours or just chose to fuck around for three hours. So nah, I didn't do that. So I, and I get it. It sucks to be held accountable, but you actually need that around you. And the faster that you can get that in your circle, the faster that you're going to win. And the faster that you're going to be set on track to do all the wonderful things that you want to do, like spend that dough or make that paper or wear that brand, or get that chick, or get that dude, or get that person, whatever the fuck you want, you'll be on your way to get that because when it comes time to spread your wings and for you to fly, you're, you're already kind of beefed up, you're wired already, you, you got the DNA of fucking bionic man and shit, like you go get that boo boo, it's all you, and um, and yeah, so that's my trip down memory lane. So I hope that the message made sense. I hope that you found some sort of value out of it. If you did, leave a comment below and let me know what your takeaway is. And please consider liking, subscribing, hitting the bell, whatever you got to do to put me on your feed so that I can continue to bring you your daily dose of hustle nutrition. And I'll see you on the next dose. Bye.